yeah. cause, essentially. Okay, so now everybody got a little brief. Uh, I'm a tattoo artist. Uh, <laughs> Chase is a war hero. Nah. I tattoo him all the time. He's going to say he's not, but he is. <laughs> I tattoo him all the time, and I get a history lesson like I just got right now. So I've been trying to get this guy to do a podcast for years, right? And he's like, eh, Seems no, like no, it. No. Yeah. So finally, <laughs> we found some topics, and it was brought to us. We don't even know. It's kind of like this crazy sign, right? Right, like, yeah. This one kind of felt a little like a divine intervention to finally get this guy on microphone. So I think, I think we finally found something that we're both passionate enough yeah. about. Obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm passionate about the military and history and veterans, but it was kind of a lot of these things I feel like the story's been told time and again, yes. and, and why would anyone want to listen to me? But we just, I don't believe in fate, but fate kind of handed me something here. Yeah, before was, we get into that, we got to talk about, so like, what is your what is your background before you get before we get roasted? You have a legit background. <laughs> I have no background, right? Yeah. So I just like to learn about this stuff, and I'm super excited when Chase comes in because he drops knowledge. I always say, dude, what what about Hitler? How did Hitler do this? Or how did this war go? And the next day he's bringing me books and videos and check this out. But so I like to listen and learn from it, but I don't know much about it. What, how did you get into this? Mil He's a military historian. He has a military museum at his at his parents' house. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I like to collect. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not an expert by any means. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't yeah, even have a degree or anything like that. I'm just <laughs> I'm passionate about stories, right? Uh, soldiers and and kind of what what our fighting men have gone through and, and people all over the world. My background is um, just growing up. I've always been fascinated by my grandparents from World War II. My dad served in the army during the Vietnam War era. My uh, great uncle earned a Navy Cross in World War II. Yeah. I just have a long history, family history. I've always been fascinated by and that. And I like your story that you have too. You say that you had two athletic brothers. Yeah. That they they were like star athletes and you weren't as athletic. So um, you went toward... I'm the furthest thing from athletic. <laughs> I, I hate sports. I hate running. I hate physicality. So who did you look up to? Well, I, I on the on the smaller level I, I looked up to my dad i yeah. looked up to my grandparents but you know watching movies with my dad and stuff like that and you see those war movies and you're yeah. you're you're fascinated by them and look at these heroic people look at these military guys and then when you start reading about them it's it's you know you watch rambo 2 and it's like this is this is asinine but there's people that have done bigger better things than that and you, nobody knows about and them. nobody knows about them you know you always you there's a meme that's somewhat true the old man walking around the store in a, in a vietnam hat is more badass than you'll ever yes. think you want to be you yes know? And, and, and it's not even talked about it's not highlighted I did and I feel like just like when when Chase is getting tattooed he'll he'll tell, tell me about you know Medal of Honor guys or, or any of these stories and it man you can you can go briefly over like 10 of them and you're like how are these stories not common knowledge Mo why, why do we care about Captain America right. or Marvel when we have legit real people that have done this stuff I think most of them if you made movies about them people wouldn't believe them they would, yes. just, they would just call bullshit them. yeah some of the stories that you told me I'm like dude there's no way that's true but well, it Benavides, even Audie Murphy even though he's one of the most famous veterans of all time he's, when you actually break his story down it's insane it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy you know? so what is your military background uh, I served in the army for three years I joined right after high school that was my goal in life. Chase was the kid yeah. wearing army fatigues to school <laughs> no I didn't wear fatigues <laughs> I never wore fatigues I'm just saying he I'm was the guy that when trash. he was young uh you could always tell that you wanted I was, to be I always a had an army shirt on or an American hat and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. I'm very patriotic, always have been. Um, yeah, I didn't wear fatigues, but yeah, it's been my... If you asked me when I was 10 years old, 15 years old, or 17 years old, I'd have said, I'm going to join the army. 100%. I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm going to be an infantryman. Um, everybody, you know, you're you're intelligent, go to college. Oh, I want to serve my country. One of yeah. my... Patton's one of my heroes. He always has been. One of... Uh, Patton's famous quotes is that the highest obligation and privilege of citizenship is that of bearing arms to one's country. So one, it's your obligation, it's your duty, but it's also a privilege. It's but why did that speak to you? To do. Like I said, just... It's amazing to me that some people get that. I had no idea about any of this when I was a kid. And there's there's certain people, I'm sure everybody knows that kid that they grew up with that had this dialed in at, a, at an early age. Like, why did that speak to you? Like I said, just, just watching the movies and stuff and seeing that and thinking, wow, that's, that's something that you can see that it's really been done. And yeah. to me, the, the kind of the everyman aspect of it was, yeah. was so fascinating. You go, you go down to the VA or the American Legion and these guys that they work at the auto shop, they work, you know, at Stater Brothers. Some of them don't work at all. Some yeah. of them have all kinds of, they've been through these 
horrific experiences. They've been through these triumphant experiences. They've done all these things, and that's something that I can be a part so of. So whereas somebody that's an athlete would look at right. sports as something, you looked at it. To military. a degree, but like if you're if you what well, if you like MMA, Donnie, no offense, but I don't care how much you train, you're not gonna go win the exactly. battle. You know? exactly. If you like football, you're not gonna be a quarterback. True. I can be a soldier, I can be one of these people. The only thing that separates it's more accessible. Right. It's yeah. not it's not that they're doing what you can't do, it's that they're doing what you didn't do. Not you personally. Yeah, you yeah. Pe- you know, they they stood up and they took that risk for yeah. that reason and i just i thought that was that was fascinating it's, it's a beautiful thing it's so you went to the army then yeah and then what from there uh, i joined the army uh, i served in 11 bravo which is infantry i was in the uh, first cavalry division i did a tour in iraq i came home i got out and uh been been back in hometown area ever since see how humble that was he's a silver star recipient too <laughs> gotta keep it short and sweet, yeah. <laughs> so basically the idea that we had for a podcast is we wanted to get a lot of these stories out we were like man these stories aren't ever told especially in the time now we don't want to get political or anything but with with the country going through what it is man there's people from all races all walks of life that have great beautiful stories that we wanted to that we wanted to do but we hadn't had like that push to get us to go forward and then chase found this guy and uh this guy grew up where we grew up we grew up in the same town and uh you read his site how did you find tim no so so randomly i was I'm on Facebook and Instagram, so I'm on a lot of military sites and Medal yeah. of Honor recipient sites and things like that. And I saw a uh, Jason Denham, who was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously in Iraq. Uh, he was killed in action smothering a grenade, which is sounds horrific, but it's actually one of the most common ways that grenades have, or I'm sorry, Medal of Honors have been earned, was Somebody, smothering a grenade to protect your buddies. It's, yeah. it's that instantaneous decision of... If that grenade goes off, it may kill my buddies. Uh, it's definitely going to wound us. It may, you know, cripple the mission, and it could possibly kill multiple of my friends. Or that's that's the idea. And it's that instantaneous decision of I'm going to give my life by covering this. I'm going to yeah. take that. There's there's no more embodiment of what it means to be a Medal of Honor recipient. You know, charging machine gun. You know, holding holding your ground. Those are amazing, amazing things. A lot of those. Were, allow you that time to think the grenade yeah. is that instantaneous it's just that human nature factor either you have there's it no you time don't. there's no time you there's either no do it time. or you don't you either do it or you don't so i read i I've, i'm very familiar with jason dunham i just started reading the comments like i sometimes do yeah you know hoping for positive stuff and that negativity yeah. and one of the comments by someone i've never heard of just a lady wrote a beautiful story it's unfortunate that tim no didn't get the same honor when he deserved it you know and i my knee jerk reaction. We talk about a lot of, you know, bullshit and yeah. stuff was, Hey, probably who is the, who is this guy? Yeah. Why does this lady think he did something? Maybe it's her cousin and, you and the she, Don Shipley in your head. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm immediately thinking, call him bullshit. She probably heard some family stories yeah. or she heard some nonsense or, you know, or, or what have you. So I just, I just did a quick Google search on Tim. No. And mind you, the initial site was, you know, a national website and she was from Missouri or something. She wasn't local. So there was no connection to local. No connection at all. Yeah. So I Googled him and I went to the uh, virtual Vietnam memorial site, which has everyone listed that was killed in action of Vietnam. Yeah. And I saw Tim No, and the first thing that popped out, it said Redlands, California. And I said, holy shit. Yeah. So it kind of took me aback because that's, that's where we're from. We're, yeah. I'm from Mentone. You're from Mentone, but we're in the, the greater Redlands area. We ran area. Redlands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We grew up in Redlands. So I, so in my head, I'm like, that's insane. And then I kind of checked myself and I was thinking maybe I was on a Redlands website. So I went back, said, nope, sure enough, that was the Medal of Honor site. That has nothing to do Completely with Redlands. Completely random. Yeah, so it was like, wow. This and Redlands isn't a big city, man. No, by California standards, it's, it's a small town. You know, yeah. we, don't, we don't have a lot of business. We don't have a lot of commerce. I mean, we, we have a good amount of people, but it's rare to meet someone from Redlands outside of Redlands. Yeah, you know? so then Chase texts me and he's like, we need to get this guy's Medal <laughs> of Honor. This guy, yeah. look at this. This is crazy. And yeah, the guy uh, was raised, graduated Redlands High School, but he also served with another guy right? that's from Mentone, so and these guys ran in Mentone. Yeah, so further on that, I, I started doing some more research because I didn't go to sleep that night. I, yeah. think I was just like, wow. So is that like know. for you, is that like, that's, that's going like to keep that, you up? That's like that epiphany moment. Yeah, you, you've, you like I said, stories of courage, speaking of courage, that, that makes something in my blood go, you know, yeah. when, you, when your heart starts beating faster, when you hear these stories. You and I, when you're tattooing me, I don't know if you notice, but when I'm telling you stories, sometimes I have to stop so I don't start crying. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not the most emotional Goosebumps. person in the world, but yeah, yeah it just it makes you feel something. So I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. Why does this guy not have the Medal of Honor? So I tried to do some further research, and I found another gentleman by the name of uh, John Castle, who's from Mentone. Yeah. And I found an article that mentioned him. 
Tim No and another friend, Stephen Huffstetler, who was also from Mentone. Yeah. And uh, um, John mentioned. And these guys were all buddies. They're all buddies. John, in the article, he wrote, "We're just we were three Mentone boys, something to that effect, that went to Vietnam." And I mean, and when you were raised in Mentone, the Mentone boys thing for people that are from Mentone, it kind of does mean something, man. Yeah, it's kind of like. Yeah, it's crazy to think that it was. This was in the fifties. So if so if Redlands is, is small, Mentone is about <laughs> yeah. a tenth of that. Yeah, and and back then just nothing but orange groves, very few people. So so the chances of you finding somebody that had that right was this crazy. connection. And then again, in my mind, one hundred percent, no doubt, this guy deserves the Medal of Honor, and he's got this Redlands Mentone connection. You yeah. Know? So I, I I read a little bit more about it, and uh, yeah, Steve's. Steve uh, Huffstetler, I believe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. He's the only one on the wall with the hometown of Mentone that uh, was killed in action in Vietnam. Wow. And you, know, and you didn't know about him before? Never, never heard about him in my life. So, of course, I asked my dad. He said, I remember him playing football at RHS. So then it's oh, so your dad went to school circle. with him. Yeah, he was a few years older than my dad. You know, yeah. just, just full circle. And then John's still alive. Uh, Mr. Castle, I was able to contact him on Facebook briefly. But, yeah, yeah. He, he confirmed the, you know what we had read um that tim was from the redlands area went to school in redlands but he, he grew up hanging out in mentone you know and, and not to to go too off course but uh when you're from mentone a lot of people kind of look down on us we yeah get, yeah we get treated like white trash you know people yeah. talk poorly about mentone a lot so it's yeah. kind of it was kind of a matter of pride all three of these guys even if the addresses are in redlands just you know when we're, when we're young in Mentone, what do we do? We play in the orange groves. Yeah. You, you hike the hills. You play in the Sankey. You and eat stuff. nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the concrete plant and stuff. Yeah. But these, these guys are doing the same thing, man. Yeah. And then of the three, two of them didn't come home. And of the two, one of them deserves the Medal of Honor. He yeah. Gave his, he gave his life by jumping on a grenade to protect So then guys. the other part of the connection is Mr. Castle, right? Yes. His family, there's there's a really famous yeah. store in Mentone. If you were raised in Mentone, even if you're in Redlands, everybody knows about this store. It's like 100, 150 years old or something, yeah. or 100 years old. It's Green Spot Liquor. It sells beef jerky, world famous beef jerky. It's like this little hole in the wall spot that everybody around here loves. And even if people that don't know Mentone, if you go, oh, it's Green Spot, they go, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, the, 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 the jerky yeah, store. The store so, like, five years ago, I was in there and I was getting some jerky and I, there was a postcard on the front counter and I bought it. I love old memorabilia and stuff. And it's a picture of a family sitting out or standing out in front of Green Spot Liquor back in the day when it first opened. Well, Chase gets in touch with Mr. Castle, who is friends with these three. And again, I hope I'm pronouncing that. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Castle, yeah. Uh, I'm going through, I'm talking to him. I, I was hoping to talk to him about Tim, which we did briefly, and Steve, but he, he started talking to me about Mentone a lot because he uh, lives in another state now. And he mentioned to me, oh, yeah, my, my family was the owners, the first owners and yes. proprietors of Green Spot. And he had a picture. He sent me a picture. Sure enough, it's the same. It's uh, the same postcard picture that I bought at the liquor store. And the lady in the picture is pregnant with Mr. Castle's mom. Yeah. So we were like, dude, this yeah, is it's insane. Just, it's like... Kind of like a so that's kind of what was our push to actually do go ahead with the podcast, get these stories out. But Chase is really hell bent on getting this story out, <laughs> this Tim No story. And man, when you hear this guy's um, what is it the citation the citation story when you get, when you hear his story, it, it's amazing that he hasn't been awarded the Medal of Honor. So that's what we're hoping just to put some um, attention on this, and maybe maybe. Yeah, I got a I got a twofold mission, Donnie. I'd like to twofold. I'd like to get some congressional attention, maybe Senator Cruz or, or yeah. um, Paul Cook. Tim deserves the Medal of Honor. I don't know what the reason was that he wasn't given it. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of stuff can happen that can cause that, but it would be, you know, it's it's against. Don't the you way think when somebody work. get what what did he actually get awarded? Uh, he ended up being awarded a Silver Star. Okay, which validates that's the thing. It's there's certain times when you read the citation. Um, I believe it's a staff sergeant, staff sergeant uh, Cash in Iraq. A lot of people are pushing for him to be awarded the Medal of Honor, and he greatly deserves it as, as well, Alwyn Cash. He was awarded the Silver Star rather than the Medal of Honor almost because of an error. He was wounded grievously, and he was still pulling his soldiers out of a burning Bradley. He, he was basically, they knew he was going to die. My understanding is that his commander rushed the award of the Silver Stars to get him something. 
he later found out additional details of the action and, you know, had wished he had awarded him or put in for the Medal of Honor. So there, there's paperwork errors. There's a lot of things. And then like probably that sometimes that. when they get the Silver Star, they're like, oh, that's cool. Right. No and one's going to complain. The guy exactly. that got it isn't going to fight for it. Exactly. Right. A lot of people don't think they deserve that in yeah. the first place. Um, time goes on. Families don't know things. So I don't know what the reason was. There could have been a lot of valid reasons. But the thing is, the fact that there is the Silver Star and there is the citation, the citation lists exactly what was done. And like I said, just, just based on, on my research, there was 235 uh, Medals of Honor award in Vietnam, and subsequently there was 26 more that were given yeah. after review. 68 of those were awarded to soldiers, Marines, sailors, or airmen who jumped on grenades to save their buddies. The exact same action that Tim No did. But Tim No did a little more than that prior to that. But just that action of jumping on that medal, or I'm sorry. So take away grenade. everything else. Take away and everything else. And we'll get else. to the citation. Right. Take away everything else. Just jumping on that grenade, that's... that's at least in, in Vietnam alone, 68 times the Medal of Honor was awarded for that. That same action that Tim performed, but he was only given the Silver Star. It's just, right. you know, and it's and I, by no means am I taking away from the other man. They're, that's, that's you know, the highest form of sacrifice you can have. It's just would be a just world if, if everyone that deserved it got it, you know. And if a mint owned dude could yeah, make Redlands, it happen. Redlands, Redlands, Manton. And that's the other part of my mission. I'd like to, uh, to Steve Huffstetler, and again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The only, the only Mentone soldier killed in action in Vietnam. I think as a community in Mentone, yeah. I think it'd be nice to get a small memorial plaque somewhere for him. Yeah. You know, I don't know where, I don't know what. Yeah, that's the thing is of, you, you don't hear these stories. You know, I, uh, my grandparents went to high school, what was mm -hmm. it, five years before? Yeah, something like that. Uh, um, no. So, and and Huff Stetler? Yeah, they were about a year apart. I think uh, the graduate. So this is a guy that years. walked amongst our our family, right? You know what I mean? And he died. How old was he? Uh, twenty years old. Tim twenty. Was 20. Think about that, man. Think about being twenty years old. You give the ultimate sacrifice, and just to no fault of your own, or or like you said, maybe the family don't understand what's right. going on, and over time, it just gets kind of washed away, and it's just time marches on, and, and yeah, and people move on, and it is what it is. You yeah. Know? But um, like you said, I mean, they walked the same ground. All these guys went to RHS. They went to Redlands High School. That's where my dad went. We've been, we didn't go to RHS, but we've been there a hundred times. Yeah. We've walked those grounds. We've been in those classes. We've been in those auditoriums where they sat. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, Steve being from Mentone, um, guarantee you he was in Green Spot store. That's a tiny store. You walk yes. on that same ground. How, how cool would it be if, you know, Mill Creek or, or um, Arthur's or, you know, Green spot store. If we just had a plaque, just a you know a bronze plaque, maybe just to acknowledge it. What yeah, he did. just 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 this is who he was. This guy lived. This guy existed. You yeah, know? you're 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 never really dead until your name's spoken for the last time. So yeah. you got to keep that name alive. Every time somebody goes goes to get a coffee or something, you know, maybe if we could find somebody that would let us put a plaque somewhere, yeah, and we could maybe we could get some donations or something, you know, yeah. just just for Steve on the one hand, and then Tim try to get him what he deserves yeah so how do we go about doing that you know i don't know so yeah. we're, we're at the we're at the very basic stages um with everything that's going on yeah with, with my job in the country we kind of got put on hold with a lot of this but um i'd like to reach out to some local business owners and mentors yeah, see, if, cool. see if we could get a spot and then just you know try to uh, you know obviously we're willing to donate some money and yeah. then maybe if we can get some other donations depending on cost to see what we can get for that would Steve. be amazing for tim i think we need to get the word out i'd like to um again prior to everything that was going on in the country senator ted cruz was um, uh, um dealing with an issue with a medal of honor that was being sold out of the country and if i I, I don't necessarily agree with that but the idea that he was that concerned about something like that and and was willing to push it be outspoken about that i think this is something that so that was do. somebody that sold their medal of honor no this is a this isn't like an indian wars or, oh. or a spanish american war medal that had made its way out of the country and then oh, ended okay. up being sold an auction that's that's so what's the hang up with that they want it to be no so they were off on uh the, the medal of honor is illegal to buy sell trade or give away basically in oh, the okay. united states which is well-meaning um but what that all that does is it just pushes it to the outside of the country so oh, okay. there's a lot of american medal of honors that are no longer in the united states because they're illegal to buy sell or so it's it's oh i see you know but that's, okay so that's let's, should we paint the picture we gotta right. paint the picture of tim okay what tim did for his country all right so tim no again as we mentioned he's 24 years old Serving in Vietnam, he was in the 1st Infantry Division. So, again, 20 years old. I remember I joined the Army when I was 18. I thought I was old. I thought, I, yeah. you know, you think you're going to live forever. You think all those things. But I'm 36 now. Are you 37, 38? 39. Look, looking back at a 20-year-old, yeah. right? Looking back at you when you were 20, yeah. how young and inexperienced, just how much less life you had to give. One of the one of the articles I found, they, they called him Hanging Five Tim because he liked to go surfing and things like yeah. that. So, 20 years old. It's 1966, so it's early in the war. It's not as... Um, 
divisive as it is in the country later. Obviously, still he's still support. getting there, but there's still support. So, so a young guy like him, he's in Vietnam. He went to Vietnam. He started his tour. Let me see here where I had that written down. He's been over there just a short amount of time, though, relatively, right? Yeah. It's a year-long tour. We're in the garage. It's pretty hot right now doing yeah. this thing. But think in Vietnam, almost 90% humidity, basically, right? Yeah. So they're, they're on a mission. Tim No and his... Um, Unit, they were alerted to the presence of two companies of Viet Cong. Now, okay. what's a company? A company is about, it depends, it can be about 100 guys or so. Okay. Figure it that way. Um, Viet Cong are a regular force, but we'll, we'll figure there's about 200 to 400 guys, yeah. potentially. Enemy? Know? Enemy soldiers that yeah. are in this area. So, him being infantry, their job is essentially go make contact with the enemy, go search and destroy, yeah. go stop these guys from doing whatever they're going to do. So, as a 20 year old man, you're literally being told, go fight to the death, essentially, you know, uh, to a military guy, that's just the daily routine yeah. to, to a guy in Vietnam. That's of course, that's what we're doing. We're moving there, but looking at it now, looking at it from the civilian world, looking at it from Comfort. guys that have never been in anything like that. You know, you think of the movies and you think, Oh, big, big deal. You know, Rambo will walk up there and shoot 50 guys with a machine gun. Yeah. But think of it in the reality of it, right? How many, how many clicks or kilometers or meters are you actually having to walk? How hot is it? How much gear are you wearing? Yes. We got our guy back here with our flak fest and all that stuff. But think about, so this is what he would have been wearing. Similar to this. This, this is a bit later, um, set up, but similar to that, right? Yeah. The, the heavy flak vest, the, the long sleeves, the jungle fatigues, the helmet, all that stuff that, that weighs a lot, right? There's bugs, there's leaks. There's there's heat. There's everything. There's all those other. It's all misery. unknown. Take away take away the combat, and you're just in pure misery. Man. Yeah, you're. They have reality shows about it now. Right. Of exactly. just that, you're eating like shit. You're all not, you got to do is survive. You're not sleeping well. You're worrying about your family back home. You know, it's you're not, worrying if you're going to see them again. Yeah, it's not, and it's not just am I going to die? It's is oh my grandpa was sick before I got. Am I ever going to see my grandpa again? Yeah. What if my mom has a heart attack? What if my little sister gets in a call? You know, yeah. all those things are weighing on your mind. What's my girlfriend doing back home? Because a twenty year old, that's all you care about at that time, yeah. anyways. You know exactly. So they get a mission. In this area, there's two companies of enemy soldiers, and two to four hundred. Yeah, about that. Um, you can you can give. The, I don't know the exact numbers of a of a Viet Cong company what it would consist of, but I mean, even if you minimize that, we'll say fifty guys. But fifty plus guys, enemy soldiers are entrenched, so they're going to move to and make contact. So what that means is. I'm, I'm sure, you know, you guys have heard it a million times. Or you've heard that if you have the high ground, you have the advantage, right? Yes. If you're dug in, you have the advantage. It's generally three to one odds. You want three times the amount of people for one to attack a fortified position. That's basically what they're doing. If the enemy is there and they know they're there. It's like they're already hidden. They're already hidden. They're, they're already waiting for you. So you have to walk. Necessarily. You have to identify them right. and then find you, a you walk, cover. You move to contact. You're walking. You're sweeping. You're looking for them. But they're not running from you. They know you're coming. They know exactly what wow. you're doing. Right? So it's not like... You know, the big bad Americans and all their equipment and all their vehicles are going to go just slaughter these, you know, poor peasants. No, you're making contact. You're making contact. And these aren't poor peasants. They're, they're Viet Cong. They're regular forces. They're, they're portrayed in the media a certain way. But these are well-supplied guys. They're supplied by the North Vietnam. They're supplied by China and the Soviet Union. They have AK-47s. They have all kinds of weapons. They have manpower. And they have a willingness to die. And Tim knows this. And Tim knows this. Every one of these soldiers knows this. Every one of these soldiers would have went through boot camp. They would have went through basic training. They would have had, you know, a brief income country depending on the unit of familiarization and then you're out in the bush and you learn from other guys and you see the other guys you're these are infantry com companies right yeah so a lot of guys in vietnam were in the rear they were not doing combat stuff which god bless them i'm not criticizing it but not everybody was in combat but the guys that were infantry they were in combat a lot and a lot of those guys first cavalry division they'd spend months rotations in the now field. what kind of stuff are they doing like when they're out in the bush what do you mean by that are they out away from like a base depends on the mission depends on the unit right but essentially you're doing you're doing ambushes you're you're walking out into the wood line where you know the enemy goes on trails and you're setting up you're you're setting up claymores you're setting up trip wires you're setting up things like that you're waiting for the enemy to come so you go to sleep you're on 50 50 half of you guys are up half of you are down you're waiting for the enemy to come by um, you're going through villages, you're trying to look for intel, you're trying to talk to the people, you're trying to win hearts and minds at the same time. So there is zero comfort. Zero comfort. Zero comfort. Constant stress. And again, if you've never been in the military or you've never been in certain types of uh, environments, it's, it's, it's hard to comprehend. Yeah. Like I said, the best way to... When it rains, you go inside or you suck yeah, up yeah. for about it. You know, in the military, well, fuck, if it ain't raining, it ain't training. If you're in combat and it rains, you, you don't get dry again. You know, yeah. in Vietnam, it's very humid. The monsoon season's, you know, six months of the year, it's just torrential downpours. Like Saving Private Ryan, you watch Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. They, they go over the side of the boats, they attack. You know, it's badass. You know, oh, I could do that in airsoft or paintballs. Okay, 
take away all the combat. Go jump in a swimming pool with all your clothes on, but add to that. Add, add a jacket, add a backpack. Go jump in a swimming pool, then roll around in the mud, and then don't change your clothes for a week. Right? That's wow. combat. Just that alone. Just that alone. The, the pieces of metal digging into you and stuff like that. When I was in the Army, that was one of the... Rashes, chicken, oh, yeah. Chiggers, all bugs, mosquitoes, leeches, all those things. Like I said, to, to me, it was... The lack of sleep was hard in the army. The not getting to take your boots off, that jungle rot on your foot, things like that, that the horrible itching. You know, you gotta, you don't just get to lay down and go to sleep. You gotta dig a hole before you do it. That then you're tired. Then you you get two hours of sleep a night, but you gotta take a piss. So crap. Now I gotta get up. Do I try to stay here? All those things are going on you times weeks, times months, times however long you're over. Times you when's know? the enemy gonna shoot me? Exactly. Times. When is my buddy that I've been knowing, you know, I've been getting so intimate with in combat because nothing's going to afford you. Leaning like on each other. Leaning on each other to when he's going to die, you know, yeah. to, to what if it's And him, witnessing it. Or what if it's me. Yeah. And there's not much you can do about it, yeah. you know, it, depending on what it is. To hearing, to hearing people scream, to hearing people die, to hearing people be silent, which is sometimes even scary. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? All those things going on. And this is a 20-year-old guy. These are 18-year-old guys. These are... 30 year old guys even some of the older guys but for the most part 21 22 See, these are the guys. things that that i don't think i'm not a military guy man i've never faced anything like that and those are the things like when you tell that your stories that really resonate with me that, that man i don't think that the regular people like myself understand that part of it and you i know what i mean and i don't think anyone ever will and it's it's part of it is putting yourself in other people's shoes i mean you look at a firefighter and you're never going to know what they go through until you do it you yeah. know you look at a cop you're never going to know th- and most of us never will but with the military, it's just such a different world. It's yeah. so it's so extreme. The things they ask you to do and the things that you do do willingly for yourself, for others, and for your unit are yeah. just they're incomprehensible when it when you think about it outside of it. You know. Yeah. Even I was only in the army for a year, or I'm sorry, three years. I did a year of deployment. Some of the stuff that I thought was funny back then, that I thought was exciting, that I was willing to do, now it terrifies me. You yeah. Know, having kids and stuff like I, I, you know, all of nightmares. Like I'm back in those same situations that I would have laughed off at the time, and now it's like Jesus, that was just. Yeah. awful you know wow. and the heat and, the, and and everything else that's going on it's just it's so that's what tim is facing before any any battle before anything before any just combat. that alone right for right. a 20 year old kid you yeah. think about a 20 year old kid now exactly and you go man you mm-hmm. know we have kids dude not too far off from yeah that, you know and you go man could what would my kid do in that situation or if you have a younger brother or cousin mm-hmm. And you think of a 20 year old, think of like the 21 year old or the 20 year old that you know now. Yeah. Picture that kind of stress on him. Man. And th- think of the 22 year old in Vietnam that's a squad leader, you know? He's a squad oh, leader. Really? He's, in, he's in charge of nine, 10 guys. He's in charge of their lives. If he doesn't do the appropriate thing, they may die, you know? A 22 wow. year old, 21 year old, 24, 25. Is that why guys Vietnam are vets are just so badass, like when you meet them? Like they're cool guys. <laughs> I, I think all vets are, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's good and bad in everybody. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's pieces of shit and there's heroes in every. In every, you know what I mean, like the old school Vietnam guy that. But yeah, but know, that's, that's, that's but the. But being a pussy type thing, right? And a lot of those guys have been through more by the age of twenty three than most of us will in our right. entire lifetime. Okay, so Tim is facing that stuff. Just that's just basic. That's what every soldier over there. That's what every facing. soldier's facing over there. And again, like I said, I mentioned the guys that aren't in combat. Even the cooks, the cooks and 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 the maintenance guys and the mechanics and stuff. For God's sakes, those mechanics are working twelve hours on, twelve hours off for a year. You know, yeah. for a year they're they're in, in the mud, they're conditions. laying on the back in those same conditions, and they still have the risk of mortars and everything like that. The cooks, they're they're putting it out there, man. It, yeah. it, it ain't easy. Yeah. You know? So, so where's he going? So what what happens from there? Do you want me to read the citation, or you want to go for it? Then right. we'll I'll ask questions throughout it. Yeah. So just to be formal, we're gonna go ahead and read uh, uh, Tim No's citation. Okay. So this is uh, June eleventh, nineteen sixty six. Private First Class Nose Company was alerted to the presence of two companies of Viet Cong entrenched in entrenched hilltop positions. So just that line right there. That means nothing if you don't know what it means. But two companies, we've already talked about size, entrenched hilltop positions. Entrenched means they're dug in. Yeah. Right? Uh, anybody that plays paintball, if you, or if you can just imagine paintball. Seek. Yeah, just, you know just, just imagine paintball, though. It hurts if you get hit, right? Yeah. Would you rather dig a hole and be covered down to your waist and sitting there waiting for someone that has to walk into you? Or do you, want to be, ready. do you want to be the poor fool that has to walk headlong into that? Who's yeah. going to win? Yeah. Right? So they're walking into that. And again, we mentioned the high ground. That's that's military 101. That's the first thing you learn. The Just high walking into advantage. that though. Yeah. So now you're walking up. You have fatigue. You have the, the, all the other conditions. All the other conditions. Enemy has the drop on you and they're entrenched, right? 
All right. So that's the first line of this thing, man. Yeah. The unit deployed to eliminate the insurgent force. Platoons online, Company C was sweeping up the hill in the midst of a rubber plantation when they were suddenly engaged by a furious vol volume of Viet Cong fire. So they're sweeping online, Battle Drill 1, Alpha, uh, react to con move to contact, react to contact. Everyone's walking online, basically. You're walking, you're spread out. There's enough distance in between you that one machine gun can't take everybody out, one grenade can't take everybody out. So you just spread out looking for things, right? As soon as you get hit, you're gonna form that wedge, you're gonna react, squad one or platoon one, depending on how you do it. You generally want the the lead element to engage while the um, secondary element's gonna try to flank and go around the back, okay. if you can. But they're getting cut up. Immediately, they're getting cut up. They're in rubber plantation, right? So there's these trees or these crops or whatever they need that's gonna limit their vision. All those, that grass and things like that, cutting your exposed arms up, all those other things that are going on, right? Probably pulled some muscles sleeping because you're, yeah. you're not sleeping well that night before. From their well-fortified emplacements, the Viet Cong force concentrated the full firepower of small arms, automatic weapons, machine guns, grenades, recoilless rifle on the small American unit. So it doesn't say the size of his unit, okay? But if we think platoon size or company size, you may have 30 guys, you may have 100 guys. They're just getting slaughtered right now. And again... So people are dying all around. People are dying all around. Everyone's wounded. Everyone's wounded according to the citation. Everyone's wounded. That means getting hit, I was never wounded, but getting hit is... is by what I understand and what I've seen, a terrifying thing. You know, am I going to live? Am I going to die? I either need to fight How bad this. is it? Yeah, how bad is it? I need someone to help me. Donnie, help me. Well, shit, you're worse than I am. You know, somebody else help me. Oh, you're worse than I am too. So everybody's wounded. That's a morale killer too. That's, that's, you've lost the initiative there. The enemy has the initiative. You yeah. need to take it back. They, they're on top of you. They're pushing you back, you know. And these are your friends. These are your friends. These are guys you sleep with. These are the guys you live with. These are the guys you fight with. These are the guys you do everything with. You know, these are the guys that you talk so to. So not only are about. you facing your own mortality, you're witnessing your exactly. friends. Every scream you hear is someone you know. Every every body you fall see fall is somebody that you know, right? You wow. want to get to them. You want to help them. Small arms fire, automatic fire, heavy machine gun fire. So this is not, you know, a couple of Viet Cong farmers with, with a bolt action rifle. These are guys that have machine guns set up. Now, if, if you've never heard of a machine gun, it's a terrifying experience. If you've never faced a machine gun, it's, it's, it's god awful, man. It yeah. feels like impossible. It's like when you play Mike Tyson's punch out and you, you figure out the rhythm and you hit him and then you get to Mike Tyson and he punches you once. And yes. you get, that's, that's how you feel with a machine gun. It's like, how do you that's beat this? It's, it's impossible. Yeah, it's just, you throw your controller. It's just rapid fire. Exactly. And yeah. this is where you'd want to throw your controller. This is, this is death ground. This is, this is, there's nothing you can do about this, yeah. right? From their well-fortified emplacements, the Viet Cong force concentrated the small firepower of small arms, automatic, heavy machine gun, grenades, and recoilless rifles. Recoilless rifles, essentially a bazooka. So they're shooting rockets at these guys. And they're grenades. Just, and grenades. So the first thing you see is either somebody get hit or you hear the explosions. Again, to to think of movies, um, Tears of the Sun. Yeah. Remember when they're moving along at the end and they just get opened yes. up on? Think something like that, yeah. right? If fire is coming from anywhere... The Viet Cong aren't stupid, and they're dug in, so you can't even see them. You can you can spit fire back, but it's it's not going to be much. Private First Class Nose Platoon and the Reconnaissance Platoon were in the direct line of fire, and both units rushed forward to a seemingly abandoned Viet, abandoned Viet Cong trench line to gain cover. So there's a trench in this area, right? So that's, that's defilade. They think, if I can get into that trench, I can survive. I need to get out of this open ground. Again, this is death ground. If you stay here, you're going to die. So they see a, a pit, like the Sankia, yeah. an, entrench, an entrenchment on the side that's abandoned. So they run to it. So that was the Viet Cong? Yeah. It's, well, it's an abandoned position. They say, okay. Right. So they're thinking, even if they're not thinking, just, just that primordial being of them, I got to get out of this. Get low. Oh, I'm dying right hide. here. There's somewhere to hide. So they rush to that trench, which is partly human nature. Unfortunately, the insurgents anticipated this move and had positioned a machine gun at one end of the trench. So again, oh these aren't stupid guys. Right? They so they're exactly at one end of the trench exactly. with the gun faced the long way. Correct. So like a proper L-shaped ambush, you it's an L-shape. You have guys at the front, you have guys to one side. So when the enemy moves into it, you open up. There's nowhere to go. If you go to the left, you're getting hit by these guys. If you go to the right, uh, you're getting hit forward, backwards. So they gave them an out. The Viet Cong were smart. Wow. They gave them an out. It says they anticipated this paint. I'm sure they planned it very well. So the Americans run and dive in there, and now what do you see? Fucking machine gun opening up on you. Excuse my language. Yeah. Directly in their path. Now now you're not in open ground facing machine gun. You're in... You're trapped. You're trapped. You literally fell into the trap, right? The murderous fire of this weapon now 
took a very heavy toll on the American defenders. The Viet Cong hurled a barrage of hand grenades in the trench, came out of their bunkers and assaulted the position, attempting to outflank and surround the men of Company C. So we're a company size element, so we're about 100 or so as well. So these guys are, now you're in just, just panic mode, you know. You're, everybody's dying. Everybody's dying. The grenades are coming over top, so you want to put your head down. That gives the enemy the time to pop up and move forward because they're not stupid. If they pop out of their trenches, they're going to get shot, so they throw the grenades. So you're diving for cover. You're, you know, you're and in they're getting mode. closer to you. Right. They wow. used to do that when, when I was in Iraq. We would, they would throw grenades at us, and, or they, they would shoot at us, and you'd get down, and then they'd hop the grenades. So it's like, do you go up or do you go down? You know? Yeah. So now amplify that times this. If you're in that trench and you're wounded and you're, especially if you're not a fighting capability, you're, you're, you're just praying, man. To yeah. Whatever you believe in or whatever you don't believe in, you're just, you're just hoping something's going to save you. You're going to, you're going to hear the helicopters. You're going to hear something, you know, what's keeping these guys alive. What's, what's going to keep this fight from decimating. Think of, think of Custer's last stand, those yeah. last minutes when the troops are just running in, in terror and the enemy's overwhelming them. You know, this is how you get those battles that are well, it's in military terms. It's called a route where it's just a completely one-sided victory. Right. Yeah. Again, the enemy has the initiative. They're on top of them. They can do nothing. It's, uh, um, Vitor Belfort and um, Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva. Yeah, as soon as he rock. punches him that first time, Vanderlei is one of, an amazing fighter, but he yeah. can't do anything but retreat and try not to die. That's, that's they where they're at. Coming. They're just getting piled, right? Yeah. Vitor doesn't get hit once. If that fight would have happened 20 more times, it might have been 20 different ways. But yeah. at one time, that's what's going on right now. Yeah. The Americans are just getting pounded. They're rearing. They're on their feet. They're just trying to survive. The only thing keeping them alive right now, in spite of his... I'm sorry... Private First Class No and his machine gun crew were occupying a position in that trench for approximately 25 meters from the Viet Cong fortifications. That's 75 feet. They're only 75 feet from a Viet Cong fortified position. Okay, and he and all his comrades were already wounded. He and all his comrades were already wounded. And everybody's many, wounded. Tim's, everybody's Tim's wounded. wounded at Tim's this point. wounded at this point. And many more dead and wounded lie both sides of the trench. So there's bodies everywhere, man. This is hell. This is this is what as you envision hell is. This is what people have nightmares about. Everybody's down. Who's going to protect you? Nobody. Yourself, right? So in spite of his injury, Private First Class No remained at his weapon, effectively engaging the onrushing Viet Cong and urging his comrades to withdraw so he could still provide covering fire. So he's telling his guys to get out. So get the hell out of here, right? And he's laying down that machine gun. I was a machine gunner. Just that, that, that life-saving thing. The only thing, if you're, the, if you're an American and you're wounded and you're in that trench and you're thinking, oh, sweet God, I'm going to die. I'm never going to see my family again. And you're hearing explosions and you're hearing bangs. The only friend you're fa sound you're hearing at this point is known as machine gun. That pop, 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 driving them back. Yeah, there's, there's, there's one force of us that's sticking it out. Somebody in this trench right is giving it back to the enemy those enemy that are thinking that we got the americans down we got those americans dead all we need to do is come in and finish them again that knockout punch you yeah. know they, the fighters reeling back i just got to give them that knockout punch it's not happening because no is on that machine gun no is rocking and he's that wounded M60. keep in mind he's, he's wounded. wounded he's wounded he's 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 accepted his death. We don't know what he's thinking at this point. So we don't know. I don't know how grievously he's wounded. I don't know if he's thinking, you know, fuck this, I got this, I'm a warrior. Or if he's thinking, I'm going to die here and I'm not going out like that. Or if he's just purely thinking of the love any, of his fellow man. Any way. Any way you look at it. It's amazing. He's rocking that machine gun. He's not giving up. He's not curling in a ball. He's not. He knows that his men need to. He has to because he's rocking that machine gun. Yeah. Right? I was a machine gunner. It's, that's, that's your job. It's a crew serve weapon. It's not a you serve weapon. You are the lifeblood of that unit, right? So all these guys, he's yelling at them, get out of here, get out of here. And he's firing that machine gun. Now, so is that him accepting his position of death at that point by not telling his guys to get out? Or is he covering them in is. hopes that maybe he to me, to me it is. And, yeah. and I'll never know that. And I'm just reading these lines here and I haven't read uh, you know, all the research that went into the citation or anything like that. But uh, Lenny Kravitz, the singer, his uncle, Leonard Kravitz, and his namesake are in the Medal of Honor in Korea. Wow. On machine gun. His last words were, get the hell out of here while you still can. And he stayed on that machine gun and he rocked that machine gun so his guys could fall back and he died in place. Right. <sighs> God, that's so beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's just beautiful. It, 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 there is something about that that just scratches your soul. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can picture it. A, you, and if I showed a, you a picture of Lenny Kra Leonard Kravitz, his uncle, he was a, a overweight looking guy. Yeah, He's not particularly Doesn't, intimidating, but just just him in that moment, gritting his teeth, firing that thing, that that flame coming out of the muzzle of that thing. Looking back, get the hell out of here while you still can. Not help me. Not give me some go. more ammo. Not somebody cover me in my retreat. Just get the hell out of here while you still can. As he's dropping it, and Leonard Leonard. Kravitz, in my opinion, 
overwhelmingly deserved that Medal of Honor, which was an upgrade from a distinguished service. Yeah. Now, Tim No, um, in my opinion, he's doing the same thing here. Yeah. Okay, it's a smaller scale action, but he's doing the same thing here. Urging his comrades to withdraw while he could still provide covering fire. Right. Damn. Just just think of that. Just right there. To me, that's 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 at least the silver star that he earned. Yeah. Now, all these guys are wounded. They're not moving as fast as they should be, or they're not moving at all. Suddenly, a grenade rolled into the trench, coming to rest at their feet. For a moment, everyone froze. Right? So if things aren't bad enough, and I showed you a video prior to this yeah. of, a, of a grenade in Jeez. a safe going off, and so, just, just the power of a grenade. Yeah, before we recorded, Chase showed me what... I mean, we all know a grenade blows up, but they put it... He showed me a video of this guy that on YouTube, you can look it up, and they load this grenade into a safe, like a, you know, a basic size safe, lock it up, get out of the way, they pull the pin, and it blows this safe to smithereens, literally. The thing's gone, door's yeah. gone, everything. So you can imagine what this could do to a human body. Grenades aren't at all like the movies. There's no flame. There's no it's giant just thing. It's mostly, yeah, it's just it's shrapnel. Wave. It's shockwave. Shrapnel and shockwave. So it's, they're, they're a lot less intimidating to see, but what they do to a human body should not be discounted. Yeah. Now, the one I showed you was an American grenade in M67, I believe. Um, the enemy would have had, these would have been Viet Cong, I mean, Vietnamese grenades, they probably came from China. They're probably Chai Kong style. So they're varying degrees of um, how powerful, effective, and uh, good they are. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you just had the 4th of July. You, get, yes. you know you get nervous on some of those fireworks yeah. when you light them and you go, oh, shit, yes. that one didn't go off. Now imagine you're wounded, you're bleeding, you're dying. You're hearing that machine gun rock. You're hearing all these things. And then at your feet, time just stops. And you look down and you see that grenade. If you try to pick it up and throw it, you might have a chance to do that. It might blow up in your faces and kill everybody. It might blow your hand off. It might not, right? If you leave it there, not everybody may die. Maybe somebody will. Maybe more than one person will die. But you're already so wounded and you're already so devastated. It might 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 take out your machine gun and then you're left at the mercy. Yeah. But it's definitely, if you have wounded on the sides of that trench and that grenade is going to blow up and out, you could definitely have multiple fatalities and multiple casualties, right? So everyone sees it. For a moment, everyone froze, and this is from the citation. It was too late to pick up the grenade and throw it out of the trench. Grenades have varying fuses depending on where they're made, etc. You know, Americans, I think they used to tell us at three to five seconds. Yeah. I wouldn't trust it. Yeah. I'm scared of grenades. Yeah. Um, but um, grenade hits the ground. By the time you recognize it, by the time your body looks down and you send that signal back up to your brain and you realize, shit, what do we do? Right? That's, that's when you start, what, what's that movie Snatch, when you right before you die you don't think about all your loved ones you just have a stupid look on your face that's that's <laughs> yeah. that's that snatch moment that, right uh, uh, yeah just fuck man. yeah fuck we're done yeah. they got us right disregarding his own life private first class no threw himself on top of the grenade a fraction of a second later the his body absorbed the full blast of the explosion he had ex excuse me explosion he had voluntarily given his life to save those around him so not only is he staying in the fight not only is he on the machine gun not only is he wounded not only is he being a soldier till the end when that grenade goes he has split second to think man and that's where i said you either you either have it or you don't at this point and and 99.99999% of us don't yeah but he saw that grenade you know we can only imagine what's going through his head he's already wounded he's already wounded but he doesn't want to die yeah you know there's no way he's 20. there's no way he's a 20 year old kid he just graduated high school he likes to surf he's got a girlfriend he's got his family back home he's thinking about you know probably coming home and wearing his uniform and yeah you know, he doesn't want to die. He wants to have a fucking soda and a beer and, and, yeah. and go to the beach again. Yeah. But he sees that grenade and he sees his friend. So he covers it with his body. And I showed you that video and, and you can find videos all online yeah. all day. He, he curls his body up around that thing, right? He knows in that instant, in that, in that split second, my friend's lives are worth more than mine. And he uses his body, he absorbs the blast of that grenade, that grenade rips his intestines apart, it rips his body apart, and, and he obviously is fatally wounded in that, allowing his uh, comrades to live. Now the citation cuts off there, I don't know what happened, um, how the rest of the soldiers were relieved or how the story was relayed. But hats, people had to live to But tell people the story. survived because of that, right? Yeah. And people are alive today because of Tim No, and wow. others like him. And like I said, his mom gets a letter you know, <laughs> your son was killed in action. And then yeah. she gets a follow-up letter that says he was killed by a grenade. That's initially all she knows, right? So that's that's expected. It's it's horrific. You move on with your life. Just time marches on, and, and he's forgotten the pages of history, you know? 
someone who did something so heroic, so it's so, movie shit. It's movie shit, man. It is, and and like I said, it's sixty eight Americans in Vietnam were awarded the, the Medal of Honor for jumping on a grenade. He did that, and not only did he do that, he held off the oncoming Viet Cong wounded. after being wounded with his machine gun. He's yes. urging others to withdraw. When he, he's not panicking, he's not looking for cover. You know, you got to read between the lines on a lot of these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, during the Medal of Honor, you have to do something above and beyond that you wouldn't be criticized for if you had not done. He's a machine gunner. He should be up on his machine gun. But it's not enough to just say that and just accept that as, a, yeah, as if nothing. He should be on that machine gun. But the fact that he is and the fact that he's got the presence of mind to be telling those guys, get out of here, you know, that's that's... I don't know who was there, but if you're a younger enlisted soldier, maybe this is somebody's first combat action. Can you imagine how terrified you'd be? Oh and then, gosh. and then looking up and seeing that lion of a man behind that machine gun that, you know, you're wounded, you're, you're, you're freaking out. You don't want to die. And it happens within seconds. Within seconds. You see this guy though. He's, he's, he's the ramrod. He's pulling everyone together. He's keeping you alive. He's keeping that unit together yeah. at that point. And then that grenade goes. And then it's that, that moment again where it's, you know, it's, here we go. Like I said, if you're a believer, start praying. If you're whatever you may be, or yeah. curl up, or do whatever you can. And then you watch him leave his machine gun. He's not in a covered and concealed position. There's no cover, but he's got cover behind that machine gun. He's he's a little bit safe behind that thing. Yeah. Right? He's leaving that relative safety. He looks at it and then he throws his body on it. Can you imagine? And he didn't. And there's no time to, and to make no that time. decision. There's no time it's to do just, anything. It's just he did. Like that is just insanity. Like. Yeah, you just think, even if a guy was heroic and had every heroic thing, you still may not have the instinct to do that. Oh, absolutely. And it would have to be instinct. Yeah, and it's been said a million times, you can never um, tell who's going to be a hero. There's there's dozens yes. and dozens of stories. I love you telling about talking about that. We, we'll definitely have to get into that. <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, some people are born heroes, right? Or right. they have it in them. And then other people are inspired by acts of hero- heroism. And, and I then, love those th- stories. And there's there's other guys that are, you know, the hall, the high school quarterback, the biggest, buffest, baddest guy you can freaking have. You yeah. think they're going to be a badass and they just, they flinch in combat. They just yeah. don't have it. You never know who's going to have it. It's yeah. that innate sense, you know, of, of, there's a lot of things that can be, you know, again, not to be, to use some of the common ones, but Desmond Doss, you would have never thought this skinny little Seventh Day Adventist kid who's a pacifist, they think he's a coward. He had it. They didn't, I mean, they had courage to spare the other guys, but he had some, whatever that is. Else. Audie Murphy, he was, uh, when he joined the army, I believe he was five foot four, 112 pounds. He was 17 years old. He lied about his age. They tried to, to stop him multiple times. 112 pound guy. Have a 112 pound guy walked in here and said, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to earn every medal of valor that you can earn in the, in this military. And you know, you'd be like, get the fuck out of here, yeah. punk. I'll, I'll pick you up and I'll throw you. Yeah. But good God, if he didn't stop a whole German counterattack while being wounded, while manning, yeah. uh, you know, a, a machine gun or a 50 cal on a half track, you know, those things. And there's, there's, it's like being born with this magic something, huh? Hey, like I, you have it in you, but it's, it's invisible. But, but even they don't to yourself. Even know yeah. That's what I'm saying. They don't even know it. Yeah. None of us know it. And that's, that's what's so great about it. But with him, he did it, you know? Yes. And I, like I said, a silver star is no small thing. It's, yeah. it's absolutely, I would never. Unless you're talking about yours. Oh, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he deserves more, you know, he just does. There's just no way about it. The, it's not like, well, the, sure, he took out a machine gun and these other guys took out a machine gun or sure, you know, he was a pilot and he shot down five planes and the other guy, it's not, there's no gray area for this to me. Yes. It's, it's 68, this is just in Vietnam. If you go to World War II in Korea, there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and scores of yeah. guys that earned it by jumping on grenades. Iraq and Afghanistan, they jumped on grenades. And so they, why not Tim? So why not Tim? Why not so, him? And I don't think there was any, I, again, nothing I, have, malicious. I don't think there was anything malicious at all. I don't know if it was just a commander's mistake or the way it was written or what have you, but mistake or not, it needs to be rectified as, as far as I'm concerned. So everybody locally that lives around us, uh, Redlands, Mentone, any surrounding area of Southern California or nationwide, honestly, you hear this story if you're not inspired by it. But so, yeah, we're going to try to get a little movement together to try to get some um, attention on Tim and hopefully uh, get that upgraded. I got my my Steve Huffstetler bracelet here too. I was thinking yeah. maybe we could sell some some of the like the rubber ones for yeah. for both Steve and to raise and some Tim money. Try to raise some money or try to do something. Get him a plaque. Yeah, we're in the early stage of this, yeah. so I don't want to I don't want to look like we're we're scamming or scheming or anything no like no. That. So just, that's basically what what we're gonna do our show on. We're gonna highlight we're gonna highlight these stories. We're gonna hopefully interview veterans with great stories. 
Um, but yeah, we're really gonna try to focus on guys whose stories aren't out there that should be. These stories are, it's like you said, it's movie shit and it gets forgotten. And especially in a time like this with all this chaos going on in our country, I think stories like this really can bring people together because there is no color barrier. There is no economic barrier. There's these guys come from every walk of life, right? Absolutely. There's no, you know what I mean? So that's basically it for this one. All right. Well, so yeah, share it up, share the, share this video, please. Um, we'll, we'll put a little link out there that hopefully everybody can share and get behind this and then get those uh, plaques and hopefully get ahead of, get a hold of, cruise and uh see if we can get this thing upgraded <laughs> paul cook anybody who's paul cook he's a southern california senator i'm um, sorry congressman yeah do you think we could get him i don't know we'll see we'll see <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's it for episode one and we will be back soon all right all right